pretend foods produce pretend people. What do I mean by that? And what are the hormones or molecules of stress and how do they affect you? How much joy and sweetness are you truly experiencing in your life right now? I'm Laura Lee Humphreys, and in this episode of Faces of Freedom TV, I'll be answering those questions as well as telling you what kind of diet will produce the unhealthy state of the hormones and molecules of stress so that you can stay away from them and instead choose a diet that will support you in creating greater health, energy, vitality, so that you can thrive and create a life that you love. So this video is part of the self-care series of videos that's all about the body-based template that I created called the Seven Source Channels of Nourishment. And in this video, we're going to conclude our conversation about the third gate or channel, which is all about whole foods. Now this channel or gate is this correlated with your solar plexus, which is located right below your rib cage. And in the endocrine system, it correlates to this, the organ or the gland of the pancreas, which is all about regulating your blood sugar. In your energy system, then you can look at this gate or channel of nourishment as correlating to your third chakra. So the last video in this series, this part of, of this third gate, then I talked about this concept called bio-individuality and how important it is. So what that means is that you look at and honor your own unique individual experience of life, your own particular rhythms and cycles and psychological makeup and the things that you're experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis that's very, very different from anyone else. No one else has those experiences, has your emotional, psychological makeup. No one has your genetic makeup. So what you need nutritionally is gonna be different from anybody else. And what you need right now with whatever it is you're experiencing in your, in your life is going to be different than what you needed last month, last year, or even next month, as well as looking at the seasons of the year. So what you need in the middle of summer is going to be different than what you need in the middle of winter. So how we stay in tune with all of this bio-individuality and honor it is by tapping into your intuition being connected to your internal spiritual guidance and direction, as well as tapping into and communicating with the innate intelligence of your body, because it does know what it needs and it will communicate to you what it needs, provided you're willing to listen to it and develop communication with it. Now, what happens when you're not in touch with your body and your inner wisdom in this way when you're not honoring your bio individuality you know that conversation is just as important to have as the other one and that's what we're going to be talking about today so if you haven't started already to, to clean up your diet then i strongly suggest that you do if your diet is one loaded primarily with the standard american diet where it's all about fast foods packaged processed foods pulled out of a box out of the freezer section of the grocery store that's loaded with refined sugars, refined flours, energy drinks that's loaded with unknown chemicals, GMO things, I really strongly suggest that you start looking at cleaning up your diet and moving into a towards a more plant-based whole foods diet. And I'll explain why in this video. So what exactly is your diet producing? You know, it's a known fact that if you have a, a, a diet that's primarily the standard American diet of all of those pa packaged processed foods that I mentioned, those are loaded with all kinds of things that you don't want. All kinds of chemicals, of preservatives, of artificial coloring, artificial flavorings. And when you think of the word artificial, what does that really mean? It means fake flavoring, fake colors. That's why the food is fake, because it's been so processed that there's no nutritional value in it. It's been made in a manufacturing plant 
that's owned by a corporation. It's not been made by a plant made and grown in the earth. So all of this fake food, this packaged processed pretend food, I call it, is what produces a pretend personality. It's one of my favorite sayings that I like to share with people. Pretend foods produce a pretend personality or fake foods produce a fake person. Now, I know that may be a bit harsh, and it's meant to be, because it's meant to get your attention, to get you to think about what I'm saying, so that you can look at what you're doing and hopefully make some different choices. So let's break this down into why do I say this? Why does a pretend food diet produce a pretend personality? So let's look, start first with the food. As I mentioned earlier, pretend foods, packaged processed pretend foods, have a lot of foreign chemicals in them. There's a lot of pesticides, antibiotics, preservatives, fake flavorings, fake colorings, MSG, GMO things. All of these chemicals are extremely dangerous and toxic to the body and they do a lot of damage and they are known to create inflammation. They are known to create disease, to accelerate aging and to create degeneration of your body, which leads ultimately to death. They're designed to tear you down. Now, when you have a diet filled primarily with these kinds of foods, that puts a tremendous amount of stress on your body. It's called physiological stress and dietary stress. Your body has to exert a huge amount of effort and energy to break down those emotion, those uh, pretend foods that, and all of those chemicals that have no nutritional value to begin with. So your body is en is, ends up in a deficit after it's done dealing with all of those chemicals and that fake food just to break it down, metabolize it, and get rid of it. It has to draw upon a lot of mineral mineral and vitamin and nutrient reserves stored in other areas of your body, like your bones, to be able to break down all of that food stuff and get it out of your body. And if this is your typical diet with every single meal, that creates a massive amount of overwhelm and toxic load on your body that it can't deal with all the time. So there's a lot of this toxic waste running around, floating around in your body, and it's stored in your fat cells. Because if it wasn't stored in your fat cells, it would end up somewhere like in your brain and your heart, which would produce a life-threatening condition. So if you're wondering why you're having a difficult time dropping excess weight, especially around your gut, this is one of the reasons why because look at what you're putting into your body. Look at the toxic load that you're making your body have to deal with that it can't get rid of. So it's got to store it somewhere to keep you alive. When you're in this state, what do you normally, when you're in this physiological state of stress, then it changes how your body functions. It, it changes your hormones, it changes your biochemistry, and especially it changes your nervous system. It puts you from the state of homeostasis and natural normal way of being into the fight or flight state. It shifts you into the stressful state of, I have to deal with this life-threatening situation and this life-threatening stress or something's gonna happen. We're never meant to live in long-term states of stress, either emotional stress or physiological stress. That's not normal. It's not how your nervous system is designed to function. It's typical and normal for you to be in this fight or flight stressful state for a short period of time to get yourself out of an emergency, out of a life-threatening situation, but not to stay in it for the majority of your life. And sadly, most people now spend probably up to about 70% of their time in this nervous system state of stress, fight, or flight, which is literally killing you. 
deteriorating your body, setting you, setting you up for disease. Now, when you couple that physiological stress with the emotional stress of simply having to deal with your life, all of the day-to-day -day demands, the pace, the shuffling around on the roads, the commuting, the driving, and then if you have on top of that, always in the background like the wallpaper of your life, a lot of emotional stress from traumas, from hurts, from upsets that you have never been able to move beyond and to resolve. If you're carrying a lot around, around a history of emotional upset and trauma, that's very stressful. Then you have the day-to-day -day stresses of living. Then you've got the physiological stresses of this horrid diet. And you wonder why you don't feel good. You wonder why you're not experiencing a lot of joy or sweetness in your life. This is why. You know, for a lot of years I studied, I followed a man named Dr. Joe Dispenza and I've learned a lot from him. And he talks about what is known as the hormones of stress. Now, every time you have an emotion or a feeling, your body makes a chemical. So whenever you're feeling joy, your body makes a chemical that allows you to feel joy. Whenever you feel happiness or excitement or enthusiasm, your body makes chemicals that are of those emotional states so that you can feel them. Likewise, when you're feeling other emotions like anger, frustration, hatred, jealousy, guilt, hopelessness, your body is making chemicals for every one of those emotions too. And those are called the hormones or the chemicals of stress. Why? Because when you're in those emotional states of stress, they are not normal states. They are associated with being thrown out into this other realm of being in the fight or flight mode of having to deal with emergencies and life-threatening situations all the time, where your nervous system is out of whack, your whole body is out of whack. That's not normal. So what are the emotions of stress? What are the hormones of stress? Well, anytime you're feeling angry, <clears throat> frustration, hostility, depression, hatred, judgment, fear, anxiety, insecurity, unworthiness, sadness, pain, suffering, guilt, hopelessness. You know, you get the picture. All of these heavy, hard to deal with emotions that follow us around when we have a lot of emotional stuff from our past that we've not been able to resolve. All of the anger, the pain, the trauma, and the upset. Those are the emotions that produce the hormones of stress. So when you're in those, hor those emotional states, or when you come home from a horrible day at work and you've had a hideous commute and just dealing with the stress of day-to-day -day life, what do you tend to do just to deal with your day and to get rid of all of these heavy emotions that you don't want to do, that you have a hard time dealing with? You know, some people will go out and work, them out, work out or move or exercise, which is a great way, or to get out in nature. That's a great way of dealing with them. What do you do? Do you pull out the potato chips and sit down on the couch in front of the TV or the computer and zone out? You pull out the cookies, the ice cream, the pastries, the chocolate, the sweets, the soda pop, paste, the pastas, all of your emotional foods. You pull them out and you binge on them, do you not? We all do to some extent. All of those foods are totally loaded with all of these chemicals that I mentioned earlier. The artificial flavorings, the sweeteners, the preservatives, the GMO products, the, the asper aspartame, the MSG, all of the things that are pretend packaged processed foods are also our emotional foods that we eat when we're upset. So what does this do? This produces a feedback loop that you get stuck in. So whenever you're feeling stressed out or upset or angry or sad or depressed or feeling any of the emotions of stress, when your body is making the hormones and the chemicals of stress, you grab for these foods 
that are loaded with all these chemicals and you go after them, you binge out on them to help make you feel better temporarily. But then after a while, you don't feel very well again. And so you gra grab for your emotional foods again. And so pretty soon you're in this, bio this feedback loop and it gets you stuck. Meanwhile, your body's trying to deal with all of this onslaught of stress physically, energetically, hormonally, emotionally, and it's making you ill. You know, there's a basic principle in, in physics that says like attracts like. So when you look at the energy, the frequency of these hormones and emotions of stress, the anger, the frustration, the unworthiness, these are very, very low states of consciousness, very low states of being, low energy. When you look at the frequency or the energy or vibration of all of these fake processed pretend foods and all of the chemicals in them, vibrationally, they are a harmonic match. They blend well together on a vibrational energetic level. So what does that mean? When you are eating your favorite foods of cookies, candies, ice cream, cakes, pastries, potato chips, when you're feeling horrible, the two are reinforcing each other. The food, the chemicals of the food are reinforcing and keeping the emotions and the chemicals of the emo these emotions lodged and stuck in your body. And the emotions, the chemicals of all your emotions keep you addicted to these foods that you eat to temporarily feel better. So the two feed, the two feed off of each other and they keep you locked into this state of stress, this state of lower level energy, the state of lower level consciousness that deteriorate your body. And then you wonder why you don't feel very good. So really seriously, take a look at this and start to make some changes that I'm suggesting to you here in this video and in this overall video series about the seven source channels of nourishment, which by the way, you can download the template for this, for the, um, seven source channels of nourishment, do the lifestyle assessment and use it as a tool to help you shift things around like this. Okay, so when we are dealing with all of this cycle of the emotional stress and the foods, it's all about dealing with our life, the stresses of life, the day-to-day -day pressures. And when you look at all of that, that's just a result of things that you were taught growing up all of your life of how to deal with your life. You know, from birth, you were taught in your family environment and from the social conditioning around us, from everyone else of how you are to act, how you are to be, how you're to respond to people and relate to people. It's all about other people's agendas of what they want you to be, of who they want you to be. It's not about what do you want. So over time, as you grow up, then you develop this persona, this personality or your ego as a way to deal with your world, as a way to accommodate all the demands and agendas and wishes of everyone else. And because that's not really you, it often feels very stressful and uncomfortable and hence it leads to the experiences of trauma, the experiences of pain. And then we have this cycle again of the food. So nowhere in any of this conditioning is there the question of what do you really want? Who are you? What are you here to serve and offer and help people with? What are your deepest heart's desires? You know, finding an expression for those things and being in touch with those things is who you truly are. That is your authentic, true self. This other personality that you develop in order to deal with your life, that I call the pretend personality because it's, and it's supported by all of this other stuff, the pretend foods that I've been talking about. So that's why I call it the pretend foods produce a pretend person because it's an ego identity. It's an ego personality that's out of touch with who you really are.
with what you really need and desire and want to experience and express in your life. So what's the solution to this? How do you get out of all of that and shift over into who you really are? Well, the first thing is to look at your diet. I always tell people to start with what you're putting in your mouth and make sure that it's more of a plant-based, whole foods, nutritious diet. As we're talking about in this series of nutrition, then it's about giving your body the nourishment, the light, the life force energy, the information that it needs to operate optimally, to carry you into a long age, into, into a long life, longevity, with the energy, the vitality, the health, to be able to do what you're here to do in this in your life, to express yourself, to satisfy and fulfill your heart's desires, to be who you really are. So start with looking at your diet, cleaning that up. If you'd like to go further and deeper into some detoxification and cleansing protocols for your body, you can do that too, which is very highly recommended and helpful. The second thing I suggest is look for someone who can help facilitate you in dealing with and moving beyond the past emotional baggage, the traumas, the anger, the hurts, the upsets, the things that we all experience that so many of us have a very difficult time getting beyond. Learn how to resolve them and put them to rest and to find peace. And from that, then you can make different choices in your life. You can clean up your diet. You can do different things in how you care for yourself so that gradually, bit by bit, you can create a life that's more happy and fulfilling and joyful, that gives you more sweetness and a space where you can thrive and tap into greater prosperity. That's what the Seven Source Channels of Nourishment is all about, to help you create that for yourself. So grab the PDF download, do the assessment, use it as a tool to help you go through the different pieces or aspects of the different channels of this template and make choices and make a plan and decisions of what are you going to do? Where do you want to start to improve your life? And gradually over time, as you address each of these areas in this template, then you'll see and experience your life improving, your health improving, your mindset, your emotional balance, your emotional happiness improve. And bit by bit, you'll start to create a life that you love. So now I'd love to hear from you. What do you, did you enjoy most about this video? Did you find value in it? If you did, then I'd love to share, or I'd love to hear from you. What are some of the things that you do or can do to help you move from the pretend personality more into your authentic real self, your authentic real personality. If you like this video, then share it. Subscribe to my channel, Faces of Freedom, and you can be looking for other channel, other videos that I'm dropping here per, uh, periodically and frequently that have all kinds of tips and resources to help you create more holistic health and create a life that you love. You can also find me on my website, lauraleehumphreys.com, and on social media, primarily at Facebook under my name, lauraleehumphreys.com on Facebook. All right, so with that, take care, express your true self, not your pretend self, and have a beautiful week.